play, I think. Even higher than Meepo. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, I remember that now. That was... Um... <laughs> that was actually when, a really funny Trixie, video. Yeah, when Trixie was supposed to guess No Tails answers for all the questions. Mm -hmm. Those of you who didn't watch that, actually hilarious videos. Not even plugging Join Dodo or anything. Really, it was just, just a fun concept. Really, it was see how well someone knows their teammate. Mm -hmm. um, so, offlane Doom here, Admiral Bulldog gonna walk out, try and get a nice ward down, get some decent oh. vision with that one. And uh, unfortunately. It, it yeah, that, that was spotted, so that means that uh, this camp that should be blocked out by that ward, it also gives really good vision, it, it has a dual purpose with this ward, that should be countered right away, as, um, or not, they don't have counter wards, so, yeah, never mind, that ward's gonna expensive. last a couple minutes. Yeah, seconds to it's battle. because they bought boots on Hani, yeah. so they bought Observer Wards, Smoke, and uh, Chicken with, uh, with Fly, and you don't really afford anything else than that, so... Uh, the triple clarity and boots from Earthshake are kind of hurting their their ward economy here. But really, they don't care that much, right? Uh, because it should be fine. They're roaming anyway. Yeah, they're they're running this sort of aggro try with the dual supports roaming because we begins. we've seen this before. The Juggernaut as an offlane hero, like you give him that initial start and help out and see maybe you can get an early kill because Omni Slash there. Excuse me, Blade Fury is so good. Uh, for early first blood attempts, but you can easily just leave the Juggernaut alone up against certain matchups, and this is certainly one of them. Yeah. Uh, if, if he sees the Rubik getting close, he spins and runs away, and with the boots advantage he has, uh, he'll easily get out. That's true. I In this game, by the way, Alliance, they have a big advantage on the mid lane, having Razor against uh, Morphling. This is a lane that Razor should be winning pretty hard, I would say, but on bottom, same thing there. Lone Druid against, Bull, uh, against Bulldog's Doom, is a big win for the Lone Druid. And look at this ward that Fnatic dropped. Mm -hmm. Look, Bulldog's so sad. He's like pinging. He's like, well, I blocked <laughs> some creeps. They blocked the others. What, what do I eat now? I get the heal creep. So 15 health restored per five mana. Actually not a horrible creep when uh, when you're laning. Yeah, Better it's really not nothing. It, it's not that bad also because you get the mana aura to regen a second from the, uh, from the priest as well. Oh, so. yeah. That's true. Didn't even think about that one. It doesn't have a, a proper icon. <laughs> yeah, Valve have yet to put in the the icon. Also, doesn't for that have one. an aura status uh, because it's not an mm -hmm. aura. I guess it's just to you. No, it is an aura. What the hell? Okay. Yeah, it just it just does. It, weird it's things. just a little bit bugged, but huh, then actually can be quite okay with that one. We are gonna see um, Honey and Fly. They smoke up, but I'm pretty sure Alliance know that these two are roaming around. They should really expect them in this top lane. I mean, it's got to be an aggro try to start with. So, um, especially with that hard camp being blocked out. But EGM has just been spotted. And Hani, can you get the Fisher block here? Telkinesis is going to stop for a second. But Hani's still angling himself yeah, for that he's block. Back. He's going to go for the long range. And perfect. So beautiful line. Not, I mean, so many, I think, many other Earthshaker players would have panicked at that point in time and just gone for the stun, but Hani went into that close clutch position. What? Wow. What? S4? You're the winner of the 1 1 championship. <laughs> How do you die with no gang? What? A matchup that he should have an advantage. Ah, I don't know. Era too strong. Apparently. I have no clue what happened there. A little bit of a. That that's a, that has to be a big misplay from S4. Mm -hmm. I, I don't uh, have no words, man. Yeah, I mean these. Um, I was gonna ask you. Do you think that when we're seeing so much Razor mid being run nowadays in this group stage, and he always goes boots first just because the advantage offered to you with Static Link? Do you think uh, mid players should start getting like counter boots just to help you out and and maybe get away from that yeah. static link a little very, bit faster? Very often you would do that. Not on Morphling though. I don't think you want to. The Wraith Band is still the better option, I think, mm -hmm. because you just need to have some stats so you have the mana and you have base HP and so on. Uh, I think what he did now is fine. And of course, with that first blood, he has early bottle and gold for boots as well. He's gonna be just fine now on this mid lane. So that one death is. Really you look at Era just being chased away constantly. He does have a waypoint and oh my goodness, Era! This is how it's supposed to play out. Yeah. Not, that was not a Morphling killing Razor, that's wrong. That was a fatal misplay by him to, to try and get cheeky and waveform back into the tower like that so he can hit the razor and still try and stay in lane. That was a risk unnecessary. He could have just gone back to his tier two. Uh, but. Well, he didn't want to get stolen from a complete wave of experience. Right. It's uh, very painful to be pushed out of your lane as well. So 
yeah, maybe he could have just straight backed because of the kill that he had. I think he got too greedy. If he backed to base, bought his boots, he would still be just fine. Um, but a little bit too weak. This offlane is going really well, by the way, because they were able to establish that uh, early first blood on Trixie. He has a super fast set of phase boots and just the pressure of any point in time we could have a Fisher from this Earthshaker. And then with the phase boots uh, movement speed advantage that Trixie has, he can get onto Alliance, uh, the Loda immediately, go yeah. for that spin. And again, that, that damage is just so insane. Uh, it's the, I feel the only reason the Juggernaut is that viable is that the, the spin damage so early on in the laning phase is a huge advantage for you. Yeah, but in this game he's mostly just, you know, a hard to kill off laner and then he will help so much with the push. Mm -hmm. And he provides mediocre carry potential as well, but mostly it's going to be on the Lone Druid and Morphling of course. But uh, a lot of right click potential from Fnatic. Now I'm just trying to look at what they want to do with this um, Enchantress smoke. There's not too many openings to gang. They pretty much can kill fly only, I would say. Now, dropping this D-Ward and D-Warding here, it's very obvious that Ake is here, even though he didn't walk out of the smoke. Bulldog suddenly D-Warding something here. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't have a sentry on him. What He's is this? gonna run into fly right here, and uh, Ake is actually able to grab a troll creep, and that's perfect. They're gonna start going for an Admiral Bulldog, but fly is in for a nasty little surprise. He's now gonna Run's be sandwiched fine. up, goes up. Admiral Bulldog still taking enough damage, and fly will escape, or at least is trying to. He has Not a TP a scroll. Route yet, so there we go. Oh wow, Ake is in. He's gonna go down from this. A beautiful route from Big Daddy. So fast. Such skill on Big Daddy to hit that Well, it took him like six auto attacks. He attacked the Doom forever, to be honest. So mm -hmm. he's not really a Bulldog RNG Lord. It's more about hard work for Big Daddy. <laughs> hard work, dedication. Dedication. Big Daddy, man. Yeah. So I'm just looking at Pop now. And Loda does have some nice pulls here. He's killing both the Radiant Creeps and the, and the jungle. Yeah, it's the only thing you can really do is uh, offset the uh, advantage that the Juggernaut has, which is that constant pressure of, of the combination of Fissure and a spin. Mm. Instead of going too far out into the lane, he's spending a lot of time actually jungling, which is a extremely smart decision by Loda. It, the Lycan, that's one of the big advantages, right? It, is we've seen in the past, even Lycan's abandon lane at, at like level five and give it up to a support just because he jungles so quickly. That's true. Very fast, you can just leave the lane, to be honest, with Lycan and get so much. And Rubik is pretty much the perfect support to take over the lane and just stand there, zap a little bit with Ooh. Fade Bolt. But yeah, mid lane we see again S4 being aggressive and trying to establish dominance against Era. All about Battle the dominance the in mid lane. Yo. Battle of the Sweets on mid lane. But Fortunately, though, no, no experience or gold will really be lost because Hani makes the rotation into this mid lane. So yep. while Era will be suffering, the supports will pick up some of that gold that is lost. And it looks like we're going to have our first push. Top lane, Alliance are going to go for it. Ake is going to join up the Lycan. And with all of these summons, strong... there's very little Juggernaut can do. Yeah, this tower is dead, I think. Radiant They're trying to move up here now with... Fortified. Oh, maybe not dead. They're moving Radiant's here with both ES and uh, Skyrath. So should be able to save it, actually, with the TP in from Yonera again. But still, this damage is pretty high and pretty fast. Lions, though, playing it safe. They, they know the rotation is coming here. So Lions do a good amount of chip damage, and the next time they go for a push like that, they should be able to secure the Tier 1 tower. Meanwhile, the bottom lane, Admiral Bulldog is having a very tough time up against uh, Big Daddy's Lone Druid. 45 and 17. He is getting he perfect knows CS. He knows it best, probably, and we see so aggressive play here. Big Daddy knows he can just pressure this Doom. And <laughs> look at Doom just healing himself up. <laughs> yep, it's hilarious. It's uh, more HP. <laughs> Go. The only way he's staying in, staying in this lane, by the way. He yeah. To use this this creep has actually paid off. Attack. Between that and the Tranquil Boots, he has a good amount of reach and that yeah. he's always high enough. Oh, top lane, Trixie. Yeah. He's smelling blood. They know. Yes. It's beautiful. He gets the, the Fissure Block on the right side. will be able to get that kill. Now, the rotation is coming over from Alliance, but it's uh, really nothing a Lycan can do. Enchantress is obviously a good ganking hero, but the Lycan joining you for that gank isn't going to add much at this point in time. And, so. and she's not really working out so well from so far. Oh, double cold creep, though. Trying on Hani here. Yeah. 
Hani gonna be ensnared up. Belota has to back himself away. They're gonna leave the creeps to be able to get the last hit onto Hani, securing the kill while keeping themselves safe. Good combination. The wolf is still out though. Trixie being forced away, but Shapeshift is gonna run out soon. And both the other heroes will be able to escape. Meanwhile, Admiral Bulldog has been in biz for quite some time, waiting for the opportunity. Big Daddy, I believe, knew. In fact, Fnatic definitely know. You see the way Era is hiding inside of the trees right here. Yeah. They're going to reveal for a second. Oh, get wow. the Doom! Oh. Beautiful combination. S4 reveals the Morphling, and they get the Doom off before he can waveform over the cliff. A little bit slow by Era there. He should just, as soon as the Plasma Field starts coming out, he should just waveform. He knows what's up. But um, sadly, didn't have time and the Doom came out. Nice, nice gang by Alliance Storm. Nice coordination, of course, fortified. to try for this, but it was still a low Dyer's chance that they would get it. Um, bottom lane, power is always being pressured, you know. Whenever you leave your lane against something like a Lone Druid or DK, some heroes just punish your tower immediately. Luckily, Bulldog has been holding tower very well up till this point, but now some damage being dealt. Can, can I just make a quick comment that this Lone Druid set looks insane? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't even know if it's a tank or a bear anymore, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I like the main, uh, the main bear, but I don't know about the spirit bear. It just looks like a uh, SUV or something. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. It really does. Well, uh, let's take a look at the net worth right now. No surprise, Big Daddy leading, and he isn't even taking that tier one tower yet. He's gonna go for it now. Teleports are coming in though, and look at the battle of the last hits. The Fisher block out, and they will be able to achieve that last hit onto the tower. No deny for Alliance, but maybe they can even go for the fight here. Alliance do have a lot of backup, and Fnatic in some trouble. Hani has no mana for a Fisher block, but they should be fine as the Bear plus the Healing Ward give them a lot of sustain there and uh well honey now picking up his arcane boots they can actually turn around and fight i think yeah they could interesting to see they went for ring of aquila on uh on lone Red, by the way probably gonna switch this into a vladimir's later on i expect because of the ring of region but of course that's gonna be tranquil's first Let's see just oh, a pretty cost effective item no, and they, they should know there's no Lycan on the map at this point. You gotta constantly check Roshan and sure enough, yeah. Trixie. Trixie's job. Uh oh. He's gonna be doomed up, and with the Lycan popping shapeshift, there's gonna be a great Fisher there, and they might just be able to achieve a deny onto Trixie. Get it, honey. He can't get close enough. Boy, but sadly, no. And the medallion and right clicks here with Vladimir's as well. This Roshan is falling very fast. Even the Kelling Blade uh, was still attacking, so. Tons of damage, Roshan and Roshan killed. That was very nice for Alliance, getting a kill along with the Roshan. Trixie feet. Yeah, Trixie well, he was... had to. He had to go and check. Uh, yeah, he, he had to go and check at the same time. It seems like Fnatic, from the very start, were willing to give that one up. I mean, first of all, Skywrath Mage, Fly, he's in a bad position right now. He's really underleveled as a sport, so taking the time to get some solo Radiant's experience makes sense for him. Fallen. And then Big Daddy, I mean, he didn't even start to make a movement to that Roche pit. He was just like, nope, I'm farming this bottom lane all day. Uh, that's good, though. He knows exactly how he needs to play as a lone druid. You can't be moving around at like 10 minutes in. That's right. not how it works. He's like, yeah, I got my got my house down here, you know. You come to my lane if you want attack. to. Ooh. Not gonna go help you. Wow, I'm surprised that uh, they didn't pass off the bottle there and, and give Trixie the invis because he still has his Omni Slash. Mm, yeah, it would be good actually to run around with that Omni Slash. It's an easy solo kill on Rubik, for example. Mm -hmm. But he does have waveform now, so EGM if he's fast, which. To be honest, he always is with his Rubik. He would just wait for him away. Uh, they're going to try and go for S4. Here you can see the smoke rotation in, leading with the Fisher. Follow up Omni Slash if necessary. S4, bad time to be checking Root, my friend. He's going to be caught out inside the river. Beautiful Fisher block. This actually means they don't need to blow anything extra. Yeah, oh god, so dead. And meanwhile, I can actually get to on uh, Skyrath. It was the waveform into a Telekinesis, Dyer's setting up that kill. Tower is under attack. Oh, excellent play there from EGM. Well, actually, I'm... Yeah, top they kind of have to have been. Yeah. Also, I don't know how they would ever Radiant's catch Fly there. Are fortified. A fly is usually really good on its positioning, so I, I think you're right. It had to be the waveform combo. Radiant's and they're continuing to go for the push here. Tier 2 in some trouble. And Fnatic... You know, I really thought that uh, Fnatic were actually going to be pushing more of these towers, but... 
Well, I, actually, I mean, they've, they've taken the same number of towers as I oh, see. Oh, they're re-smoking. They're going again. Can they catch Era? Oh, oh. That wait for him. And the Doom's going to go out. That means Era's going to be taken down. Well, actually, Shrank Mort doing a lot as that Fisher Block doing some work. Now the spin goes out. He's going to try and focus down Admiral Bulldog. Echo Slam ensures the kill. It's, and still, it's still beyond me why, why in the world it's like that. Doom turns off stuff like crit. Passes. Doesn't, stun, yeah. doesn't cancel this wave, uh, morphing. Uh, I never understood that. Easy. It can turn off your, you know, your backtrack. No, not even your backtrack, but it, it turns off a lot of things. Evasion. That's, yeah. And yet, strength morph still goes on. Yeah. Fly desperately trying to pick up his level 6 because you're, you've hit a certain... Like, you are so weak as a Skyrock Mage at level 4 and level 5. Your, your nukes aren't threatening, your disables don't do that much except for against really key heroes you need to have that Radiance big nuke for yeah. you to be an effective attack. support and that's why he's spending so much time in these solo situations finally he does get it meanwhile let's talk about the other support Hani is sitting at arcane boots 14 minutes in another thousand gold he is pretty well farmed yeah that's it's very true actually it's fairly farmed I mean considering gold. he moved around the map so much yeah, yeah. Um, is under attack. It's a decent Dyer's timing. We're only 14 minutes in, um, so Dyer's if he keeps farming a little bit more, fortified. it's gonna be quite fine. Tower trades are definitely gonna benefit him as a pact on this game. Mm -hmm. But uh, great up trade so far. Nothing Dyer's really going down mid lane. They just try now to go on Doom. Might be able to get him. No, complete whiff there from Fly as he tries to land the ultimate onto Admiral Bulldog. Not a real big surprise that they don't get that kill though. And uh, actually, Fly's going to be in some trouble. EGM has the waveform, goes for it, gets the telekinesis, and Fly will be taken apart inside that little jungle area. Waveform, waveform, Shikuchi, and Sa uh, Birthright are like three of my absolute favorite skills to steal when I'm Rubik. Just makes you so mobile and so strong. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's the perfect mix between offense and defense. As yeah, it is. Exactly. Escape and aggressive initiations. Waveform, probably Dyer's the least favorite tower. of them, He's but even as we see here, EGM showcasing how you can use it to just catch people repeatedly with telekinesis. Well, we haven't spent too much time talking about Big Daddy, even though we watched his lane quite a bit in the last... Uh, couple of minutes he's just continuing to free farm his bottom lane and that's because he almost has radiance he already has the relic plus another 800 gold so that is going to be up soon he's still going to have some problems though because a lot of alliance are naturally tanky i mean all three of their cores are natural tanks first of all yeah. but they're also going to be going for a fast bkb on admiral bulldog and uh, they also have the mech up on s4 so there's a lot of sustain on this team just having a radiance by itself I don't think will give you that big of an advantage in the team fights because Alliance can go, they can deal with the first 10 seconds of Radiance and not show a immediate oh, detriment. Loda so aggressive here, he has his Aegis so he knows exactly where they are. By the way, the way he saw where the enemy was there was because their aggressive ward down by a tier 2 tower on mid lane revealed the courier flying out with an item. And that kind of gave a tell that something is wrong in our, <laughs> in our woods, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, as you say, we have uh, on bottom lane here, Big Daddy just now finishing up the gold for his Radiance uh, recipe. I'm, I'm glad for him that he gets his Radiance. He's a nice guy. <laughs> I mean, no, he, he's really fun. First time I talked a lot to no -Tail, I realized he's, this is a fun guy. Yeah, I, I remember uh, my first interview with him. He was, <laughs> uh, he was quite an agreeable fellow. Yes. But, yeah. But as nice six as you are, six, this game, you're still going to be having some issues, man. Alliance, I think, are about to finish up their rest of their items and start going for push. Like, I, I think once they have the BKB and, I don't know, do you want to wait for the Necrobook 3? I mean, nine times out of ten you do, but I think with this, like, Razor Doom, I think you've hit a certain power peak where you should be looking for some fights, even if it's like four versus five situations and just have the like and split push. I think the Lions should be trying to test the waters a little bit once well, they have that BKB. The downside to waiting for Necro 3 is that there will be Blink Dagger on ES for sure. He's oh, only 500 right. golds away, so... It's always a trade. If you want to finish your next whatever item, then the enemy also has time to finish their items. So in this game, I would push before ES gets Blink, because I don't see how Fnatic can fight. Sure, they have a 
Lone Red Bear with the Radiance and it's annoying to an extent. But when you have Medallion and a Lycan, you punch that bear to, you know, to the mm -hmm. ground so fast. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is before... This is before the bear is overwhelming. This is before yeah. Morphling is online oh, at the carry. Honey mid. And oh, even something. even Trixie, the uh, a more aggressive core, doesn't have you know his his Omni Slash doesn't do an amazing amount of damage just yet. You need at least level two in Agonims before it's Radiant a huge Falcon factor Tower in team fights. So. Yeah, exactly. So I think Alliance missed a little bit of a timing window here where they could have pressured more, especially when you have Enchantress. It is very much like Chen, even more so than Chen, that you want to do something early on in the game because you do fall off uh, more and more later on. And some people are like, what? No, Enchantress doesn't fall off as much. She has nice damage. And I'm like, I really like Chen more into the late game. Really? Ch yeah, I, I would say Enchantress, sure, you can farm up and try for something, but look in this game. He's not farming, and he didn't have an impact, uh, or any major impact. And that doesn't go towards Akia saying he's bad or anything, he's an amazing enchantress, but he just didn't find an opening this game. And in this type of game, you fall off really bad into mid to late game. Mm -hmm. Whereas a Chen will still have the send home, still have the heal. This skill, uh, like the send home can be one of the biggest spells in the game. Right. Uh, if the game plays out in a certain way, we have seen it with um, C9 with their Cheeky play on MLG, for example, yes. with Clinks sending back and blinking in and dealing damage or killing towers. Like, situationally, I think Chen is much better uh, heading into a mid or late game. Of course, it all depends always in Dota. You right, and in this game, I, I'm yeah. kind of with you here. I mean, you, you kind of surprised me with that call, but I, you're just looking at this Skywrath Mage. Like, he was that guy destroys yeah. enchantresses because you, no matter how much uh, your uh, <laughs> what, what's it called untouchable untouchable yeah yeah as it, it, much as untouchable makes you tanky to like many cores many carries actually have a hard time killing you because they depend on right clicks uh, <laughs> certain supports can oh. just wreck your day uh, have you see, have you seen the cheekiness by the way of fanatic uh, bottom lane wait Zolda Zolda he's, yeah. Yeah. he's gonna be blown up. No. Uh, I was going to say, have you seen the cheekiness? Because something they do on Fnatic right now is they pass over the Radiance towards Big Daddy, then create a replicate of him, oh, and then yes. pass it back to the bear and uh, run to another lane. So they basically have two Radiances mm -hmm. farming two different lanes at the same time. Very interesting uh, idea here. And I haven't so seen smart. this abuse. Yeah, so smart. I mean, it's obviously probably been done sometime in the history of Dota, but uh, still, not a very common thing. Yeah, look at this. It looks like they actually want to fight. If Alliance go for a tier 2 tower push, they want to fight, but at the same time, Fnatic are still forcing them back by going uphill. Honey was playing a dangerous game there, trying to position himself. I, I think he was kind of setting up for, uh, hey guys, if you teleport back, I can initiate, we can have this yeah. team fight, but... It's still, like, Era and, and Big Daddy were going, why? We can just hit a tier 3, you know? That's free that's exactly. shots. Not too much damage being dealt, though, but it doesn't really matter for Fnatic. I don't think they need to pressure towers more than this already. Right. And um, I think they're just fine. Still just farming so much uh, with their Radiances. <laughs> Multiple Radiance and same team because of this item passing towards the main of Lone Druid. It's very, very smart. I like it. Uh, gives them a huge impact right now and even if you take a team fight now it would be a little bit annoying the fact that they can send in an illusion of lone druid and the spirit bear at the same time both having radiances um of course an enchantress could take over the illusion and just uh you know give right. it back to them yeah, I, I like this mainly because it, it makes up for a big deficiency in Morphling in which is at this point in time, you're a strong laner and then you're a strong late game hero. But at this point in time, there there's this really clutch area where Morphling doesn't add much. His, his magic damage is very minimal now and his right click damage is not all that much. So, and he's not an amazing farmer. He's yeah. not something like an animage who can have like two or three luxury items by this point in time. So actually utilizing that uh, Radiance replicate yes. Look at it. gives Bottom you an extra source of income. Bottom and mid lane right now. They're trying, or at least going Roshan and pushing bottom at the same time. I don't know oh, about this, though. They know this. This is for do they? They could drop one plasma field and find out, but they don't really no. know. No wards available. Dude, they have no idea. The risk is going to pay off. The yeah, wolves, they're going to see fly. 
And the block off from the Fisher, yeah, they, they just kind of ensured that Alliance realized it now, but they won't be able to get there in time because they're blocked off from the Fisher. Beautiful play. Big Daddy's going to be thrown up on the court, though. Bad position for him. Now Moda's going to go in. Hottie drops the big Echo Slam. Immediately gets doomed in response. As Ford's getting low, but his BKB is protecting him for the time being. Now Eric goes in. He's got the Aegis, but it looks like he doesn't want to commit it just yet. Fnatic fighting their way out, and Loda, as the rest of his crew, oh, will be forced the away. Chasing. Where's the root? Oh, instantly, EGM is going to be the first to fall in this drawn-out team fight. Fnatic, they're only going to claim one, though. The rest of Alliance have backed themselves away. The they lose seven. Roshan. That was a huge risk by Fnatic, one that I didn't feel was necessary for them to take, but it did pay out in spades. Yeah, it paid out. It could have been really bad if there were wolves, but they had three sentries dropped, so if they saw attack. wolves right on top of them, they would Radiant probably not have gone for this. Fortified. Of course, the uh, wolves came in later, but that was too late. So it worked out really well for Fnatic in the end. Now, just gotta go for mid-pressure. They have the Aegis available on Morphling. This is tough. Alliance, they can't contest this uh, tower, I think. Dyer's middle tower it. is under attack. So not only do they give up another tower for, for really nothing in exchange, but the, uh, I'm looking at Era, and he's now got the Manta, so he's got that additional split push. He's got the Replicate, he's got the Manta losing. Oh no, S4! He just jumps right in, gets Fisher, and immediately off the slash by Trixie. And Fnatic, with yeah. that kind of windfall they didn't expect, they can go uphill before they were That's really planning on. Like, you can't really go in against that. It's so dangerous. The Omni Slash has basically no cooldown when we have Aghanims. We're already ready again. 7 second cooldown. So very fast. The bear is looks fine. Yeah, the healing wart. Yeah, it amazing. Me so much HP. Heal. Look at that. <laughs> just re regenerating at 140 per second. Yeah. For That's those of you who don't synergy. know. It, the, the reason the Healing Ward works so well with this Spirit Bear is because Spirit Bear is one of the tankiest units out there really, really early on, 2700 health, and the Healing Ward heals by percentage base, so... Yeah. Oda is trying to do something here from behind, he wants to set up Dyer's for running in, but ES fallen. is also camping here, honey, if he finds out... Hmm. I think Fnatic are just happy... Oh, oh no, Loda's just been caught! Jumped on by Hani and blown up immediately. And another pickoff that Fnatic have got to be happy with. They can push up Hill again now. Trixie's going to be doomed up. Admiral Bulldog as well as S4 will full pop their BKBs. Turn around, kill two heroes. Up in a row. Oh, the deny from Trixie, our big daddy at the last second. S4 is going to be rooted up and can't pursue. Nice. Excellent play there from Hani. He's going to turn around this whole entire team fight. The bear is fighting up against Admiral Bulldog. Big Daddy comes back out just to try and go for that kill and locks it down with his bear. He loses his bear but will be healed up by the healing ward. Continue on Era is still fighting. Oh my goodness, Era. I didn't even notice him. Killed up EGM. Now he's going to move on to S4. The last hero alive buyback from Admiral Bulldog. But Fnatic, very healthy and ready to keep on going on these slash. Jumping to Admiral Bulldog. A bit of unluckiness there for Trixie, but they're still in a great position to take a rack. The two heroes of Admiral Bulldog. Yep. Admiral Bulldog and S4. Now they can escape this, and they're going to be just fine. Might have to sack Trixie here. Who knows? But it would just be, oh, actually Big Daddy gonna go down instead. He will be chased down for sure. Bears not as fast as Wolves. Yeah, so he falls, make a kill streak going the way of Modem. That's a big chunk of gold for him, but at the same time, doesn't make up for the fact that you just lost your melee racks 26 minutes in. It's tough to recover from that. Alliance had a nice grip of this game, to be honest, until this double illusion play and then the very cheeky Roshan attempt. Mm -hmm. And that Roshan attempt paying off is something that Fnatic, as soon as they got it, they just capitalized so hard on it. They just said, okay, wave have ages, let's go. And they went to mid power. Sadly, a little bit of a misplay there, trying to defend the tier two. And what ends up happening is a long, drawn out, losing heroes here and there until you finally lose your racks. Yeah. Just all this pretty much coming from defending a tier two that attack. you should have sacked. Yeah. Maybe you could just hold high ground if mm -hmm. you had Fate Vault and Plasma Field. But who knows? Who knows? It's the what if. Yeah, S4 being picked off resulted in Tier 3, and then Loda being picked off resulted in a melee racks. It's probably the simplest way to, to break that down. It, yeah. You know, you can't afford to make those kind of mistakes when Fnatic were already, you know, uh, like the, the cheeky Roshan, man. That, that did so much for yeah. Fnatic. Really did. And now Fnatic are in a really great position. They have tons of gold on Era. And he's really farmed. He has two deaths uh, from his 
game total. Of course, he died mid a bit, but uh, he played so well in that last fight as well. And getting so much damage done only with the mana style he had back then. When he adds up a little bit more items, not going for a shotgun build, by the way, he will be really dangerous. Yeah, it seems like uh, standard, uh, standard Fnatic Morphling, which is going to be going, well, not completely standard. They like to go for Scotty first sometimes, but uh, Manta no, into a Scotty first. after that. Oh, Travels first, you're yeah, right. I that was their Han, uh, Han transition. Yeah. When they came from Han, <laughs> everyone was just looking at them going like, what the hell are you guys doing? Because they always went, I remember scrimming against them myself as well, and back then they were not solid at all. They were not used to Dota 2, and they always went for Travels, and we were like, what? why? What do you want with them? And uh, they, they gave up on that idea later on. It had its cute place though. Mm -hmm. Not saying it was completely bad. That's, uh, look at that. They even go so far as... Well, actually, no, I, I take that back. Big Daddy is holding on to all the armor on his hero right now. He's still going to have an Assault Cuirass, which he can pass that off to the bear as well. We do have a smoke, which is going to reveal S4. On this side, they can start out with the slow. S4 can pop the BKB, so he should be fine. Yeah. Hani, oh, he's going to block again? him off. They should have stolen him. Oh, Hani, he's going to die to this last Impeta shot. Yeah, I like how S4 just runs straight up, like, hope Dyer's they forget about me. <laughs> Get as much distance oh, wow. as possible. Straight down again, though. And the gem is on the deck right now. Nobody's picked it up. The bear has just died, and Fnatic have to abandon ship. Yep. And Fisher is another great spell here for Rubik. We mentioned it earlier in the draft stage. Uh, he doesn't have Blink Daggers. Can't really chase after more heroes here. But a uh, nice play there from Alliance. Quick reaction as uh, Honey tried to get S4 killed. And they also got the Barretts. At least some gold and forcing that cooldown. Mostly a cooldown that matters. I like this from Alliance. During the death timer of the Earthshaker, oh. they're going to smoke up, Daddy move out. Still here. Daddy, no. Yep, there's the Fisher. Stunned him for a second. Now the follow up as they get tossed him back and the rest of the damage comes in. Beautiful Fisher from Bonnie. He's going to disrupt a lot of damage there. Big Daddy will still. No, maybe not. Run, He's taking Daddy. out for the Scorched Earth. Daddy, get away. No, Admiral Bulldog. He says, who's your daddy now? The big Golden <laughs> Doom runs him off. And Admiral Bulldog and the rest of his guys will take another advantage. Oh, they killed man. Hani. They killed uh, Big Daddy. Now they can five man down mid. And, and they've got this amazing push lineup. You give them an opening like that, and Alliance will punish you. Oh, this is this is really huge. This is upsetting now for this game because even if he respawns, he has 70 seconds right now on his cooldown on the bear. So he, oh, never wow. mind his respawn. Radiant's he doesn't have that much when he respawns because he passed everything to the bear. So yeah, this is this is an opening for sure for Alliance. To push. Tier two going to go down, and I'm, I'm pretty confident that Alliance are going to try and go uphill. Uh, at least try and take the tier three, if not go for a full set of racks, if they realize the bear. I mean, they should. They killed it not too long ago, and oh, yeah, they just got they to kill them. They've got to realize that, so. Tier three being threatened for now. Era is still, I mean, as much as we've been talking about the lone druid being a source of a lot of damage, Era is beginning Maybe to get to the point tower. where he's pretty scary. With that Lincolns he's recently picked up, yeah. he can morph to full agility without much fear. Yeah, and they actually managed to fend them off here, and I think Alliance are smart to back here. Even though there's no resummon, it would be a little bit risky to take a fight in the enemy base. You never know about buybacks and so on. You might have a fight where you focus, say, Morphling first or something. He buys back, comes back into the fight behind your enemy, uh, behind your team, and you just feed away all the, you know, all the ground that you just gained. So uh, I, I kind of like the choice as well by uh, Alliance to just back off. Well, as much as you were talking about earlier how um, Ake had really fallen behind in farm, he's made a good recovery since then. He oh, yeah. now has an Agonims plus his level 2 Impetus, so he is actually hitting a pretty damn hard. And this Skywrath Mage, who is still sitting on his level 1 ultimate, no longer can really punish the Enchantress. I... Mm, true, true. And, I mean, he's far off from getting level 11. Let's see if these teams clash a little bit here. Invis Rune on... Uh, Doom, but there is a gem, I believe. 
teleported. Yep. Afro Bulldog reveals himself for a time with the Shivas, and they're gonna focus on the bear immediately, trying to kill it. Just, they don't even care about heroes at this point in time. Farther down, though, BKB is gonna be activated by S4, chasing away Hani. That's one the kill there. Hani might just be able to hide the gem for a second, and Alliance actually didn't see it. So the bear gets out. Hani not quite as lucky. Yeah, the bear was so close to dying, though. The it just managed to outrun Loda somehow. And mid lane, they had to go back and defend here. EGM gonna be the one to take this farm. But bottom, they wanna push this tower as ES is dead and they know he doesn't have Echo Slam even if he did respawn. But they had to defend mid and don't really go without without EGM. Yeah, instead they take the lesser option, which is going to be uh, Roshan at this point. It's a good option. Well, yeah, I should say lesser option. Yeah, it's big defeat as well, so uh, this is pretty big now, showing this. And that allows for... Uh, come on, guys. Cheese. 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 Looks like S4 is going to sell his bottle. Yeah. Who needs bottle? Who needs that regen when you've got a cheese? <laughs> the fast stuff. Besides, you're supposed to have wine with Dyer's cheese, not water. Oh, yes. Are under attack. Isn't it Zeus who talks about wine or something? <laughs> 34 minutes in, 13 to 13, we have a 4,000 gold lead for Alliance and a 4,000 experience lead as well. All in all, though, a very even matchup. Fnatic, I, w I think you could say Alliance would be ahead if it wasn't for the fact that their mid is so exposed from losing a tier 3 and a melee. Uh, just one lost team fight, and Fnatic can 5-man down mid and push take the range racks and then immediately transition into one of these other lanes because the tier twos are gone as well. Yeah. So their base is, is really susceptible. At the same time, Alliance have a similar kind of pushing power where if they manage to win a fight, they'll even up the rack situation and possibly even gain an advantage there. It's, you know, it's two of the most deadly heroes when it comes to losing a fight. If you lose a fight to Lycan or Lone Druid or Tiny, these are like my top three heroes I never want to lose a fight against. Because I know my base will be gone, and save for Troll. Die to Troll, that's the worst. But, um, so this game, one team fight could decide a whole lot. And another smoke coming out here from Alliance. They want to look and see if they can find these fights. And pretty smart to force things, because Fnatic, they're still abusing this, uh, Radiance illusions. Trying to push all the lanes at once and stuff. And Fnatic, Fnatic in the meantime, they're playing pretty passive. And, and just spreading out and farming for the most part. So you can see even Era, he's the farthest out there pushing pa well past the river, but it's because he knows he can. He's got a Manta as well as Lincolns, and at any point can jump to his replicate. It's doubtful Alliance can manage to pop the Lincolns, get Doom on him before he just jumps yeah, to his replicate. Exactly, you have to click one button. So his replicate is mid and controlled by Chance. You can still jump to it, but I don't think you want to. Um, well, the smoke just paid off. They killed the lone druid bear. Yeah, poor daddy. His bear has died so many times this game. I can't even... I I don't even know. Maybe five times? Four times? Five times. Yeah, it's... Quite a lot of times. So, That's right now, what, Alliance... Gold? I would say Alliance have a more straightforward fight if they want to take a fight. Mm -hmm. Because Doom is, at this point, so fat with the BKB and Shivas. He won't die fast enough as long as he doesn't get locked down by... Uh, by ES. Then he can just walk in and they take such, a, such an easy fight with Racer and Lycan and Doom just rushing in and Enchantress dishing out some damage behind and the control now from a Blink, Four Staff, Rubik, uh, also really strong. Like the sneaky pushes here, Trixie is <laughs> I even picked up a Blink Dagger and he's trying to keep the side lanes pushed because they realize with the, um, the Aegis, the Cheese and everything else, Alliance have a, a pretty decent advantage if they're able to just 5-man down mid. So they're, they're trying to punish them, they're trying to keep Alliance back, go, hey, if you push down, down mid, look what's going to happen to your side lanes, look what's going to happen to your bottom and top tier threes. It's the Rat versus Rat Man. This yeah, is, uh, it really is. Actually, Fnatic is the team, um, the word rat, rat dodo, originates from uh, Fnatic, not Alliance. Uh, uh, well, I thought it originated from Rat in the Dark. No, no. It, mm, th there's a story to it, but I can't really say it on stream. It, it has to do with insults. But, uh, okay, fair enough. But never mind that. Fnatic was at least the team that kind of coined or not coin the expression, but they were the reason for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, playing against Alliance, who are the ones known as the rats, it's very funny. Rat versus rat. We are soon going to have Ethereal Blade picked up by Morphling. I'm a little bit surprised just because of this build. I expected like the full out Scotty right click Morphling, but 
he is still going to be trying to go for a shotgun build here. And probably, I mean, just aiming to burst down one of the supports in the back makes sense. Trixie, the rest of the lines are going to be five manning in through the mid lane. Trixie doing what he can to stop some of this push. Load is already getting low, and there goes the Echo Slam. The initiation onto S4, also taking him out just because we have an Aegis onto Loda. They're still at a gigantic disadvantage without S4. Now, Ake's going to fall. Admiral Bulldog fighting up against the bear, but it's not enough. Trixie, while he's been doomed, Fnatic have won enough of the team fight that he could just back himself up. And Alliance, despite the the, the fact they had both Aegis as well as Cheese, lost this fight terribly. And that might just be Fnatic five manning down mid and trying to end the game right here. This is so dangerous, losing so many heroes without killing anyone against the Lone Druid lineup. Now you're going to get pushed, but they're trying to get at least a range racks with uh, the wolves here, but they won't get it. Very close though. Oof. But uh, this is also when you push up high ground against ES and against Waveform, even Lone Druid with his bear in front, it's very hard to take a good fight of it. Let's see if Fnatic, I think they should just walk into the base here with the creep wave coming in on mid. Trying to catch EGM is probably not worth it. Yeah, it looks oh, like they're, they're going to use that Dyer's transition to push in bottom yeah. and try and go for that tier 3. We do have a buyback on Duke, so he can buy back. This will be a full 5 versus 5. But Fnatic don't even take that. They, they, they've been the ones playing passive the whole entire time. They have a Morphling, they have a Lone Druid. They know they can just draw this game out, so it makes no sense for them to risk it all pushing up 5 versus 5 into Alliance's base. Yeah, there's no point. You just won a big fight. You could have gone... They could probably have pressed a little bit more mm -hmm. and not run after EGM there. If they went straight down mid, I think just coming in the bear would have secured the range racks at least. But you really want to take two lanes. Getting the range racks is not so important when you already took the melee racks on that lane. Right. It's more about having two lanes pressuring automatically all the time. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to tend to these lanes. Yeah. That's... Um, and Melee Rex is really what does that, not yeah. necessarily the range Rex. When you play competitive Dota and trying to understand like, some of the basic concepts, I, I see it as a nuisance, you know, the lanes. You mm -hmm. always have to tend to them, they have to be pushing towards the enemy. If they're pushing towards you, you're losing gold if you're not taking it, and you don't have much time to go for a fight or go for Roshan or whatever you want to do. So, uh, just taking racks on two different lanes frees up a lot of time and gives you more options. See, Trixie's beginning to build into a Mjolnir, already has his Maelstrom. You have Era, who finished up as the E-Blade and has another 2100 gold on top of that. Uh, Hani is going for maybe like a four staff, just an extra mobility item to help him out against these uh, heroes like Lycan and Razor. Uh, on the Alliance side, however, we do have uh, a couple of eight Agonims that were picked up in recent memory. Ake, okay, as well as S4. There are three BKBs up on Alliance as well, and then the last big pickup looks to be uh, Admiral Bulldog grabbing an Assault Cuirass, and that is really going to make him the one. Once he has that minus armor, oh, I think Aris he's probably out damaging everyone. Now Trixie's gonna jump in, gets off and off the slash on the two there, choosing the most pinkiest hero. S4's already pretty low though, he's fighting up against the bear. Additional magic damage being laid down, but S4 managed to get himself away, pop the cheese as well as the mech, and gets back up. Admiral Bulldog has already been taken out by, and there goes the Echo Slam. S4 taken out, Loda's gonna be next, trying to get away from Era in time with his extra movement speed. No, doesn't get out. Adaptive Strike will finish him off. Alliance with a couple of buybacks, they won't wow. have one on Admiral Bulldog. Fanatic backs now, that would be a good decision. Yeah. Of course, two buybacks they won the fight really convincingly this is when you just back and say okay enjoy your buybacks like that damage that economic damage they took it's really really big and they can just wait for omni slash to be ready again and then go for fight they need the es even though he, he he's only a support talking this way sometimes feels a little bit bad but uh he's really core for them. They need to have these disables, the lockdown. You can see as soon as he jumps in, the fight is pretty much determined right there that Fnatic would win it. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, just waiting a little bit now would be person. They are patient. Yeah, I think it goes to show like how um, how much Fnatic realize what a precarious position they are in the group stages that they didn't try and go for that push. Even though it would be four versus four because Admiral Bulldog did not have a buyback at that point and they knew that, they still don't go for the fight because they go, you know what? We forced a buyback on uh, Lycan as well as Razor and Admiral Bulldog's buyback is still going to be on cooldown for another two minutes when he's up. 
So if we force a fight in the next two minutes and win that, they have no recovery. Yeah. The game is over. That's really true. Right now, I'm just looking over to Big Daddy. He got another illusion rune. It feels like he just keeps getting illusions this game. So he has two illusions <laughs> running around farming with Radiance. He's, uh, he has his bear that he can send away with Radiance as well. And he has his main that's actively just punching stuff everywhere here and there as well. So the farm is insane and so easy to push out lanes without even putting yourself at harm when you have this. Um, but now Roshan is going to respawn anytime soon. Both teams know he could be up any moment. And they're just posing for it. Yeah, both teams are going to be uh, posturing themselves to jump into the Roche pit fairly soon here. trixie has got a large chunk of gold there. 4,300 on him, 3,900 on Big Daddy. Uh, I mean, you could see this could be the comeback, right? If Alliance managed to get a good fight around the Roche pit, Dream. anything could happen in the Roshan pit, right? I mean, even if you're at a disadvantage, <laughs> anything goes down happens. in the Roshan pit. <laughs> it stays in the Roshan pit, yeah. man. It is so fanatic. They're holding on to all this gold. A, which will ensure buybacks, but at the same time, if they lose the fight bad enough, that's going to be a lot of lost gold. Roshan going the way of Alliance. Getting so this could be the big comeback potential here from Alliance, despite the fact that they're very clearly at a disadvantage. I think Fnatic take this uh, this Roshan really fast, though. Look at yeah. this damage. It's, it's already dead before Alliance oh, even going to go in. Admiral Bulldog jumps in, gets on the new can he steal the Aegis? It's picked up by Juggernaut, and now he's going to be torn apart. Right click down, he didn't get the Aegis, and he's going to pay for it. At least he gets the kill on Trixie before he dies, but that's still an Aegis. Eris actually losing a lot of damage. Look at that Echo Slam from Hani. Lays down the damage on both Loda and S4. Arrow will be able to finish off S4, but Loda's trying to lock him down. He doesn't have enough damage, though. Trixie blinking forward, ensures the kill of the Lycan, and it's all over for Alliance. Uh, Fnatic keep though. themselves alive. Yeah, Fnatic. This was a really, really important fight. The last fight kind of decided all, and winning so convincingly. I think they used some buyback to get there again. I didn't really see. Maybe. Dyer's Maybe they didn't, barracks. actually. They had a buyback Dyer's on Big Daddy. Oh, yeah. Big Daddy buyback. bought back in travels then with his boots of travel. So, still amazing play by uh, Fnatic Dyer's in this game and outriding the other refs. Yeah, I have I to say. You, I mean, it originates from them. They're the true refs. <laughs> it's true. Man. I, I'm like, I looked at this matchup, uh, because the Lions did so well, I was like, okay, if they lose this, they, they're still definitely in it. But for me, if Fnatic lost versus Alliance right here, I kind of gave up all hope. I was like, well, they, they're going to be bottom six. But with this win against Alliance, they keep their hopes alive, I think. So um, Fnatic, hopeful for the future, as uh, this is going to be one of the last matches of the day. They still have day three and the last couple of matches.